Taxi UK is a support organisation for people with ataxia. We have a number of local support groups for people to attend um, and we also arrange um, conferences for, for people with ataxia. And um, here we are at the annual conference um, in Leicester. At the, the conference this year we'll be doing a really exciting project um, which is a filming project. It's uh, going to be a group of uh, young people with ataxia who will be going out on a day trip and they'll be doing, uh, they'll be creating a film. They'll be doing some filming and talking about their experiences of ataxia. They'll also be interviewing other people with ataxia or parents and it's trying to sort of portray um, what ataxia is through their eyes. Hi, my name is Charlotte. I'm 14. I have a younger sister named Jade and she has episodic ataxia. She's six year old. Hang on, hang on. My name's Chloe Selvage. I have episodic ataxia and this video is explaining how it affects people's lives. So my real name is Samuel Mark William John Pardo. Yes, I am very cool. <laughs> um, I'm 20. I've got Friedrich's ataxia. I got diagnosed when I was 19. I'm, I'm still walking. I've got no hair. <laughs> I've had Simpsons since I was 14. Now, well, me and my dad and my stepmom all just thought it was clumsiness. But when I got to about 18, I thought, mm, there's something not quite right here. And my stepmom said, well, why don't you go to the doctors? Saying, can you walk in a straight line? Well, no. <laughs> can you stand up? Mm, not very well. <laughs> um, I must admit, it was quite a big shock and I did have a bit of a breakdown. But now I think, well, I'm quite, quite tough, tough in the head. I can, I can get to the point where maybe it's just wheelchair bound and I will never get to that state, hopefully. So before I was working just to survive, uh, whereas now I've actually got something to uh, go on for, like I've got something to live for and try and fight and it gives me a challenge in life. I'm not the sort of guy to get depressed, you see. I'm, I'm too much for life away, as like a <laughs> Right, so here we have the onto spit. It's called a ball spit. When Sam got diagnosed, uh, um, he wasn't actually depressed, but he was a little bit down, and he sort of got to grips with it um, and actually come around feeling quite confident with my job. I'm a fitness coach and um, personal trainer. And we just started to work on a few basic sort of movement patterns. Um, to start with, it was more sort of coordination and balance, which was the issue. But now we're trying to get him towards the gym and work on sort of postural assessment and actually getting him strong in the, the sort of muscles that he's weak at. Might only go in a with ataxia is that if you try hard, um, you carry on, you don't give up, then you can actually um, improve and keep good. I'm Charlotte. Um... I was diagnosed when I was eight years old and I've got FA and I went into a wheelchair when I was about 14. Yeah. So I've been in and out nearly 10 years. When I was in school, it was quite a rough experience, but now and I went to college at a university and I thought I will do it and I did. I've done a BA in business yeah. and a master's and management. I've been to the conference four years on the run, and the first time I came, I was nervous. But I found I met so many people, so many friends, keep coming back to meet old and new friends, and I love it. It's so fun. It's really great having someone who can share your experiences. I talk to you. It made me a better person and I find them more positive. I mean, all I've achieved, been through, I talked to her, I doubt I would have done it if I didn't have it. It definitely makes Charlotte value life more uh, and what, whatever, she, whatever she can't do in the same way of anybody that hasn't got this, this condition, there are ways around doing what she wants to do. It might take a bit longer, and it might take a bit of thinking out, but there are ways around it. So you have to think, I think she thinks very, very positively. Never give up, really. I mean, keep fighting. Yeah. Just because you're in you doesn't mean you can't do the same as everyone else. Yeah. Straight out for him. Yeah. <laughs>
There we are. Well done. I have episodic ataxia type 2 and I was born with it, I've had it like my whole life. Episodic is like it affects the cerebellum, which is basically the coordination, the speech, everything that you really need, the main important things. No noise at all is there from his feathers, okay? Because In year seven, when I first told my friends, they were so understanding. They didn't really know what I had, but they just knew sometimes I get ill in the heat and they were very supportive. ATAXU UK helps me a lot because I was kind of like in denial and saying I don't have ATAXU and there's nothing wrong with me. When I went to the first conference I was a bit shy and nervous but the second time I went it was so fun just being with friend Charlotte and her having all the same problems. I get to go to the conference and just have fun and mix with people who know what it's like. Now he does put his wings out to balance. Can you imagine walking a tightrope? He'd have to put your arms out. <laughs> um, there's loads of things I want to do when I leave school. I'd like to um, be a play therapist. So kids who are ill, um, when they need operations, you just have to like calm them down and like tell them stories and play with them, or sort of like something to do with writing or politics. So basically something that helps people and inspires people. How's he doing? <laughs> My sister is six year old and she has episodic taxia. Um, people kind of give her looks a bit when we go like shopping and stuff, saying, oh, she's, she's drunk. What have you given her? She got problems and she's just crashing into people. And I hate to when people basically look at her like she's not normal. Um, she has like, she has like a wheelchair at times, like if she go on long journeys and stuff. But we get proper looks and then when she stands there, like out of the wheelchair just to go for a walk, they kind of give us weird looks, like what, what's our child doing? Why is she walking up? <laughs> there we are. I don't have a tax here, yeah. but I don't know, I'm trying to learn as much as possible to um, like understand what my sister's kind of going through. My advice to people that have someone close to them with a tax here is just keep their chin up, don't let it bring them down because it, should, it shouldn't really bring you down. They all, they're still normal, there's nothing different. Um, just because they've got a tax here doesn't mean they can't live a normal life like other people. So. Yeah. <laughs>